friends, neighbors, Minoans, Mycenaean Greeks. <laughs> it's time for Bingo is Life. Yeah! <laughs> the podcast. Well, Got the skeleton crew here tonight. I'm uh, still Jay's heir. Hey. For at least a few more years. Welcome back, Jay, by <laughs> the way. Thank you. Thank you. We missed you last week. Had a fun uh, trip to Charlottesville. Nice. UVA Medical Center. Mm, how's the mm. food there? Pretty good. And the one person I know in Charlottesville I met at the cafeteria. You're kidding. Yeah, it was, it was one of those oh. coincidences Mike doesn't believe in. <laughs> Just <as> statistically. <laughs> Talk about Mike Hattyshell over here. Oh, yes. Across uh-huh. the table. Yeah. And uh-huh. Chris Hattyshell. Uh-huh. Hey, hey, yeah. The hostess, hosts with the most. <laughs> and we have, a, what, 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 we're going to hang off. We have that's, one, that's right. we one more coming. person here tonight. Ooh, who's it going to be? Ooh. It's like a surprise. I can't wait. Did uh, I, 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 Somebody was really upset they didn't win bingo on the way out. <laughs> I was really? I was like, did you win? Like, no. Respect. It wasn't a. It wasn't a kid, was it? No. It was. It was. A, it was a oh, an adult. Yeah. An adult. It can handle it. Okay. <laughs> They've we, gotten uh, this far in their lives. The uh, thrill can... of victory and the agony of defeat is pretty strong in this crowd. Oh man. I mean, there's a lot of thrill and there's a, <laughs> there's some agony. We had too. we had some tears. <laughs> we had tears, tears tonight. Tears. Yeah. That's why I asked if it was a kid. Was, was it another? Did you break another <laughs> child chart? <laughs> we Mike? did. It wasn't me. It was the. The fates of the yeah. numbers. Yeah. Or, Not our fault. Or an airplane. I don't know. Yeah, well, unfortunately, bingo accurately represents this cruel reality we live in. Mm-hmm. It's true. It's all random, and uh, some people win twice. What? That's How right. How is that even possible? It seems wrong. Oh, I, I should say the best part of the evening uh, for yeah. me was two people won the last game. That was a chance to win 150 bucks, And I set up two cups with two ping pong balls and said, whoever hits it first wins. And I thought we were going to be there for like 10 minutes. Me too. For them to do 100%. That. And the kid, first shot, first hits it. shot. Where, where was it set up? At the end just, of the bowling lane? I uh, know. It was just like at the where we are, just where I am hosting the show at. We <laughs> just put a cup and gave him a ping pong ball, and that kid hit it. Instantly. And the, and the dude who lost was like, that's the way it goes, man. <laughs> That's the way it goes. It was I like mean, from eight feet away. It was oh, yeah. beautiful. It was a thing of beauty. It was a hard shot. Mm-hmm. And that kid was young. I was like, you're going to do great in college. <laughs> <laughs> that might have been the peak of his life. Yeah. <laughs> it's all downhill well, from fun, here. <laughs> fun fact, that kid and his brother also both won. <laughs> And bingo did That's right. They so, did. Yeah, they, Are you they sure that wasn't of, fixed by the family uh, of winners? The Fridley's Gap Mafia? <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Ooh, the Fried, Friedley. I don't know how to pronounce it. Uh, <laughs> you know what? Yeah. We had a good night tonight. We did. It was but very guess good. guess what? We got an even better guest right now. Ooh. Are you guys ready for this? Yeah. Hi, Mallory. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm are, good. I'm doing great. It's so good to see you. All the way from the Hot Mamas in Stanton, Virginia. Stanton, right? Yeah, we're all in Stanton. All, all in Stanton. Mamas. Uh, Mallory, everybody. Hey! 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 Thanks for being here. Thanks for having yeah. me. I'm yeah. so excited. And it's wild watching you guys do that. I've never, I didn't even know this place. I've never been inside here. Oh, it's Ooh. a weird place. I've listened to the podcast numerous times. Mm-hmm. And so I was just imagining, what is Ruby's Arcade? Like, now you've I seen had it. no idea. It's like, just a basement. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. In downtown, historic yeah. Harrisburg. What is this building again? You the, do wine the, the Wine Brothers, the wine brothers building. building. That's, yeah. Well, maybe uh, that's oh, yeah. what the sign says. We've just yeah. been saying that for the last year. <laughs> it might as well be the, the Clay Clark <laughs> building, really. Yeah. Mm. Uh, yeah. Yeah, well, or you can come play ping pong with me sometime in there. No, you want to play ping pong? Yeah. Are I'll you any good? Pong. No, I'm not good at any oh. games or sports, <laughs> but I, I love to talk smack. You're nice. That's what I'm very good we're, at. No, we're, we're, but you grew up in Harrisonburg, right? Or in Kieseltown, probably. Kieseltown. Ooh. Did you ever go to the Oyster Roast? No, who had an oyster roast in uh, Kieseltown? Um, you know, the, the guys who... <laughs> they're no, the guy longer, the they're, they're, they're no longer with us. <laughs> I remember dancing in the asparagus fields under the full moon by that wow. teepee out in Kieseltown. Oh, near was, where that was car that teepee is. Ball? Clyde teepee. and Margie had the oyster roast, and their son is... <laughs> Yeah, no longer with us. No, he's here all the time. He's a famous. It's the luthier. The luthier. Oh, the luthier. Um, the uh, I hope he's no. not listening because I you know I know oh, his name. Okay, uh, it's, it's gone. To, it's gone. Okay, it's, it's back okay. of the Bronze Age collapsed. Co- collapsed in the back of my brain. <laughs> Where are my notes? Where's Brittany? So there was a, there was an asparagus field. Is that uh, there, yeah? There used to be this like out in Kieseltown. Yeah. I don't remember what road it's on, yeah. but there's like an old tree that grew through an old car. Okay. You know, yeah. 
yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. Lots of people right. know where that yep. is. And yeah. then somewhere near there, there's like a big asparagus field. I remember yeah. the, I just, the tree through the car. Yeah. Is that going now? Mm. I don't know. I haven't been there in a while. Heisey uh, is the, the name. And there was a teepee. <laughs> Lots of hippies dancing under the floor. That's, that's right. teepee, Paul. That's got to be teepee, Paul. I, that gotta, sounds like it. Yeah. Mm. I mean, if you're... If you have the nickname T.P. Paul and someone's <laughs> you saying there's a like, T.P. Yeah. But like the, the, the yeah, shape, the, the teep, building, yeah. not like toilet paper. No, yeah, no, right. no. Not that's like, what we're talking about. Yeah. It was a T.P. He's well, like, right next to it, teepee. oddly enough, there's a big building built out of toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> so. Hey. He's a town's wild place. It's man. crazy. Yeah, it does, Asparagus for all. It does have a great, a couple of great uh, names of roads. What not there like, it's like happy Happy Ending Road or something like that. What Happy is, Ending no. Road. Oh, that's wow. the massage parlor yeah. <laughs> up by the truck stop near the interstate. <laughs> oh, Chris. Holy smokes. What is it? I guess we should have talked about the rule. I don't know all the rules of what we can uh, and can't uh, say. Uh, <laughs> uh, Dude, you can't say what I just said. We're going to that one out. Uh, I think we're like a PG. PG. Family. That was PG. Uh, that was they, have, they have the blueberry, the blueberry farm at uh, in Kieseltown. Yeah, I don't know where that is. No, I've, you got to know the blueberry farm. It's uh, the Johnson. Samuel That's Johnson. Right. He started the farmer's market. They have, okay. They have the uh, big blueberry farm out there. Well, they, I haven't they lived out. in Keeseltown in oh. 20, 30 years. <laughs> so so I've so expecting expecting not here. stayed up to date with it, to switching, be honest. Switching to that subject, which give us the Stanton versus Harrisonburg. Uh, <laughs> oh, oh, I've been I've been noticing that there's like... So, uh, <laughs> no! we, we believe in a happy balance between the two. Yeah. yeah. I think it's been really interesting. So I grew up in Harrisonburg in Keeseltown. Yeah. And um, I lived away from Virginia for decades and mm. then I never thought I'd ever return and here mm. I am in Stanton, Virginia. I keep pulling there. them back. But um, I think it's been really cool seeing how like the arts, um, how collaborative things are and seeing how the different towns have their own identity but like they do mingle together. Mm-hmm. I think it's so great all the v- different options we have too. Like growing up around here, you know, there yep. wasn't but so much you could do. You had to rent that VFW hall <laughs> if your high school band wanted to play a show. That's right. That's I true. mean, there was what, the Dodger and the Grill. That was it. Totally. <laughs> Were you a musician in high school? Did you play? Yeah, I've always been singing. So, but did, like, you, did you choir. do the open mic at the little grill? I used to cry days. on that stage you so used to much. Cry. Oh, I yeah. ran off of that stage crying so many Cause times. Because you felt because I was really nervous. Because I'd been singing my whole life, but learning to play an instrument outside of my body was really new and scary. This was in the and, '90s, uh, mm-hmm. and you cri- yes. you cried. I don't remember seeing you cry. I ran as fast as I could. You might not have seen. Me. Just blur <laughs> out into the parking so, lot. <laughs> what tears? Uh, just I, I bet I saw you in a musical at Spotswood. I was in lots of yeah. musicals. Yeah. I was, um, what, were, what, what would you? What I was in? Dorothy in the all white rural oh. version of The Wiz that we did <laughs> in 1995. My dog Snowball was Toto. She also wow. was white. Um, <laughs> yeah, so, but we did we did that show. Um, we did Godspell Good, a year huh? or so before yeah. that. That was just a really fabulous cast. Um, yeah. And it's been neat to see the people that are still doing a lot of theater and things here. I, I, like, I feel lucky to have grown up here when I did. Yeah. Mm. Organizations like Shed and Arts has had a major impact on so many people, and it's really neat to like see that from afar, and then to get to come back and yeah. see the productions yeah. they're doing still here. Jay, Jay, do you do stuff with Shed and Arts at all? I did. I played Har. Um, I played uh, Elwood P. Dowd in Harvey down there. Uh, okay, I, great. I, I think probably did a few other things. It is. I, I, so I've seen a couple of good shows down there. That they do a fantastic the, job. The, the, yeah, the, they've got cabaret coming up soon. Oh, is that right? Mm-hmm. Oh. And they did that one a couple of years ago, too. We'll have to get uh, Matt Parrish in here to talk about it at some yeah. point. Tell us about playing jazz in the streets of New Orleans. Oh, oh I know. What a, what a magical experience. What, do you mean you've had enough about Kieseltown already? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now you want to talk about jazz? Unless you know something about, you know, the <laughs> mysterious cryptoids running around. Yeah, okay. Um, not in, in New Orleans, everything is mysterious. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> pretty, pretty, pretty weird for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, cool. so, yeah, I fell in love with that place. Um, I worked there for my regular day job. They moved me there. Um, and I, I was so ecstatic, but I was in the Navy band there. Um, so I was singing national anthems and wearing a sailor suit and all that stuff as a day job. But, um, the Navy base was actually like 45 minutes away from town. And I couldn't, I was like, I'm not going to go live in the swamp when I'm like Mm. here. So I lived in the French Quarter and various parts of New Orleans. Um, Wow. Yeah. And so every day, as soon as I'd get off work, I'd just go busk and hang out with my friends, play music in the streets. And it was glorious. But it was interesting learning how to street sing, like really, like how to get the like low notes and how to like Mm. 
really learned. It was it was definitely like a what, learn. What's the, what do you mean the low notes? Like, because naturally I'm a like lyric soprano, like operatically and whatnot, and I, I've developed my low sound. But having a microphone helps. Right, right. So you amplify you project that. while you're. Why did you have to have a low sound for street songs? Well, for me, I wanted to sing in that register, but I didn't have as much power there because naturally right. I'm mm. more of a soprano, and that's where my belty power. So women want to try to sing lower and men want to sing higher? Is that Well, there's lots of women that are altos. Yeah. And maybe their and their belt or their power would be down there, but mine just happens to be up high. Gotcha. So and you, you were able to figure it out? Mhm. Did you have a coach or was it just something you just figured out over time? Yeah, just if it hurts, yep. stop. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Try something different. Yeah. That's, I'm pretty terrible about like <laughs> people are like, do you teach voice lessons? And I'm like, I don't I don't know how I do what I do. You know, I've never mm. been to I've never been <gasps> to New Orleans. You go. Yeah, it's, it's well, while it's still it's, above water. It seems like mm. the mm-hmm. kind of uh, place I would like to I would like maybe wait until my kids are old enough to like drink. Or something. <laughs> even I, you know, even just know. just to go. I mean, the fact that like I, I actually just went back for the first time in far too many years, eight years mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. this March, and I was amazed like the amount of friends that still came out. Like I got to oh, see like twenty cool. something of my favorite people down there, and um, we were in various parades because mm-hmm. they happen all the time, and your kids would love it. Like even just if they aren't of drinking age, there's yeah. still so much to do. It's still, well, it's still a big music scene, a oh. fusion of lots of styles and everything. Yeah, for sure, and it. It seemed to me from talking with all my friends that are there and actively working musicians and artists Mm -hmm. um, that it is really still slowly kind of just like this spring, I think, was a really good spring for them. Mm. Like it was one of their busiest, the most tourists, the most gigs, the most money coming back into the city after the last, you know, four years. Right. So, yeah, some some of the bigger cities aren't faring as well as like, you know, we live in such a really cool area with all these outdoor venues Mm -hmm. and lots of places to spread out. People are moving out of the big cities into cities like this. In a lot of places, yeah. that's true. But yeah, New Orleans is beautiful, and you should definitely go. Now, what led you out of New Orleans? Sadly, oh. <laughs> they closed the Navy Band while I was there. Oh. Which I, I, I always like to say that loud and proud because it was a big mistake. <laughs> ah. and, well, well, uh, <laughs> when you say the now, do you know Russell Shank? I do. We yeah, met. He, he was not in the same thing as you, right? Yes, he was. He was. And, and we once got to sit um, at Fred Fest two summers ago and have about. 45 minutes of conversation of who do you know and uh, we definitely know some of the same well, people I was under the impression he was playing rock and roll music to try to recruit uh, kids into, into the whatever it was that's the job that's the navy band it's but, and very that's what weird. you were doing but that you said you were you were dressing up and singing the national anthem or yeah you have to do like patriotic stuff mm-hmm. you also do recruiting you do you support navy balls and, yeah. and things like did that did you get to sing any rock and roll music mm-hmm. yeah we um we have it, it's an interesting product. Um, they've <laughs> since, they've <laughs> since, I think that a lot of their rock bands have now evolved more into like the brass band style thing because mm. they can really like capitalize on that like really cool thing that Trombone Shorty and a lot of those cats are doing where you can still do the music from the radio that the mm-hmm. teenagers might know at the high school, but you don't have to look like a bunch of squares in your Navy uniform. Yeah. Like, I, think, I think like with the yeah. horns, would, would, it just it makes a lot more sense. Would Russell yeah. have been dressed up in a Navy uniform? He would have been dressed up in a Navy Whoa, uniform. Whoa! I would. Can I you would. imagine that with his no, hat and his long no, hair? No, I can't. I can't. He didn't have the long hair back then, right? No, <laughs> but can you? It's still fun to think about. Russell. So how? How it was it? It must be really competitive. How did you get? It was it hard to get in? <laughs> There was a legendary Navy recruiter in the 90s named Bob Falter that worked in this area in particular. And um, I like to think that I'm a pretty decent musician, but a lot of Falter recruits were known for not being really great. (laughs) He kind of just like got a bunch of people into the Navy music program. Oh, I see. Before they had a really good system that (laughs) that actually... so, but gotcha. so I don't know. I don't know if I were to audition today if I would get in. You what was, it, no, was it voice or was it, was it there was an instrument singing, involved? Yeah. Yes, they were singing. Yeah, I had an actual like my NEC is a number that correlates to you know your instrument. So for singer. Well, you must have been good if you were Dorothy. She was yeah. good. I was, Are you I was, kidding good. Me? I was okay, but you know she's still great. Yeah, you can yeah. hear her with the hot mamas all the time and by herself. Uh, you you guys are con- you you play a lot. So, Art, is this is this your only gig right now? You are a touring musician right now? Yeah, I feel really lucky. I mean, that is one thing I like to um, sort of downplay, like, the very odd nature of the, the military job that I did for 20 years, mm-hmm. especially because I'm pretty anti-establishment. And, mm. But um, it, it has allowed me to, like, have this musical life. And, yeah, right. and now I can live on my pension and um, and I can just play gigs. And it's, yeah. pretty, it's pretty amazing, and I do feel like 
I feel like everyone should have the opportunity to do their art and like not have to stress about how they're going to pay their bills. Because yeah. it's kind of cool when you don't yeah. have to worry uh, about all of that. That's amazing. What you can accomplish. Yeah. And you've gotten some great gigs too. Yeah. I've noticed like your calendar is, is your, the Hot Mamas are playing. You've played some pretty big festivals like this summer. Yeah, we mm -hmm. have two really big ones coming up this weekend actually. What, what, and then it'll be like where? the end of our summer push. Um, yeah. We on Friday will be at Steppin' Out Fest in Blacksburg. So that's like a thirty thousand people yeah. event. Whoa, um, and on Sunday we're gonna go to Pennsylvania for the first time to Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. They mm -hmm. have an eleven day music festival where they shut the whole town down and it's just stages all over the streets everywhere. So cool. Should be, be should be recruiting for the steel factories. Then. <laughs> 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 well, we are funny yeah. outfits. Yeah, so <laughs> we need more steel workers. Yeah. <laughs> now, what's the uh, lineup for the Hot Mamas right now? Still Jess and uh, Maria. Jess and, Jess and Maria, who I know you guys had on your show yeah. back in mm -hmm. yes. March? Mm -hmm. One of the M months. <laughs> yes, <laughs> right. Um, yeah, they are still in. And uh, we also have Jen Kidd on Washboard, and she also sings and writes. Um, and then we have Endash, Nancy and Gaston. I like she her. Also... She's from Philly. So. Yeah, Same yeah. as me. Far right. Yeah. I mean... <laughs> Outside of Philly. <laughs> <laughs> kind of. Philly people always find outside. each other. What's I that? noticed, like, Philly people find each other. Yeah. Uh, We're uh, all from Philly. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Hey, Rock. <laughs> <laughs> you got this, Rock. You got this, Rock. How's your, how's your, how's your writing? You, you coming up with a lot of stuff? or? Uh, uh, you, I'm are, actually not writing that much. Anymore. Oh, no. And I did forget to mention our newest um, collective member is Erin Hunter. She's a violinist. Uh, who also what? has a beautiful voice and everything too. So she played at the Purple Fiddle with us. We just played mm, there this wow. weekend. Uh, it was pretty I, I, rowdy. I, I, I I'm a little surprised there weren't like police records or anything. Like it got <laughs> a little crazy. Uh, but <laughs> oh, that's so I've funny. heard stories about Purple Fiddle. Yeah. Where, the yeah. Purple, where is that? It's in Thomas, Thomas. West Virginia. Like, that's like a little no middle of nowhere place, right? Yeah, but yeah. it's really cool and it has a lot of art galleries and it's very eclectic and Tom, the, the town. Mm -hmm. It's right next to <laughs> Davis. Thomas, the dude. No, what, Thomas, he what, what, just stands there <laughs> tell, selling art on the corner. How do you get there? Which way do you go? Uh, well, you find just, Thomas and you then he points you, you in a direction. You get on 33 and you go west. Right. <laughs> and you just keep going until you cross like five mountains. Mm -hmm. Then you get on a road called 32. <laughs> I'm not even making that up. 33 and, that takes, 32. and then uh, and that takes you 31. into uh, Canaane Valley. And if, oh, it's a Canaan Valley. Yes. That that's why it's so cool. Yeah. Right, that's the next town over. Yeah. Like where what's that? That's the other guy's name. Oh, right. Uh, Dave, Dave Davis. Mm -hmm. Davis. Davis. Thomas. Thomas. There's Davis. <laughs> yeah. I, I, so I had a, a fun. A bunch of biblical names over there. <laughs> I, I I used to play there. There was a there was a time in which I was playing, and and man, it that trouble. That town <laughs> was the most ruckusy town. We had uh, the back in that time. I was playing with this band called the Red River Roller Coaster, okay. and we had a show that like didn't end. It just, I think we it, played. It, it might still be going on. It, I think, no, we played to like. I think we, we saw it. We, we played <laughs> at the Purple Fiddle. I'm there right now. And then now. they were like, everybody to this bar. And we all went uh -huh. to this next, and the whole crowd went to that next bar. <laughs> well, who, the, what kind of crowd is it? Are they hippies or are they uh, like people from West of, Virginia? Yeah, or? I think it's, I think there's a lot of locals that come out. But then I think that there's also like vacationers mm -hmm. who are just like there for fun. There are a so, lot of people that seem to own like condos in the area yeah. and come from Pittsburgh and yeah. Philly, where you're from. And they, well, uh, I, I, I'm they actually from Wilmington, <laughs> Delaware. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, that's, that's stolen valor. That's all right, it's stolen valor. <laughs> Mm. Yeah, it's, huh. a, it's an interesting, eclectic mix of people mm. that it's are super, there. Yeah, it's a super fun place. Though. Tell us what instrument you write on. Uh, currently, my favorite instrument to write on is my four-string banjo. Wow. Yeah. Now, do you when you when you write? How do you come up with the melody? Do you just sing and then just, or are you like mechanically coming up with it? Say, I need to go up a fifth, or I can approach it that way. I uh, usually um, tend to get a melody in my head. I, I do enjoy the convenience of having these magic phones with recorders on them at mm -hmm. all times. Yep. Like how, yep. All the song ideas from 20 years ago yep. that you lost somewhere yeah, along right, the way. Yeah. Like, right. But well, um, are you? I mean, are you plucking it out or? Uh, and, usually, I just am you, singing. You, you just hear it. Uh, hear it in your head. Mm -hmm. And then even I'll do like placeholders. Like if I have some lyrics that come, it usually comes kind of all together. Right. The concept. Uh, I was going to ask. And, lyric melody. Yeah, they usually kind of come together. together. But then yeah. I'll like leave some holes like. 
you know, and kind of like leave some spots to fill in later mm -hmm. and find some mm -hmm. words that rhyme and just chuck yeah. it in there. Do you, know? do you have a line that you that you were like, this is my favorite line that I sing? Oh, that yes. Oh, no, that I wrote? Yeah, sure. I don't or, know. I, 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 you know what? Of you all know, songs, no. that's really hard. All right, all right. Yeah, I'll, I'm going to try to come back to it. Yeah, we'll come back to it because here's what I'm going to do. Because Mike writes as well. Mike, you got a line? Uh, what? I, a, yes, a that's right. I can oh, put that's you hard. That's hard. Come on. Just, 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 give okay, me a line. I mean, well, the one I can think of, uh, it kind of getting into the esoteric uh, religion uh, of some of my lyrics, was I know I've been forgiven, but am I really saved? I, I always like that. Oh, that's yeah. good. Yeah. That's good. All right, Jay Zare. Jay Zare is actually a fantastic. Yeah, singer. that's uh, right. See, I had the one that was. Uh, I dropped her off at the outskirts of Emerald City. She was wearing my last good winter coat. Oh yeah, that's mm. good. Oh. Mm. I don't know if that's my best line. I just. Yeah, I, 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 I had to come a, up with one. Just coming up with something. Yeah, no, that no, was good. That was good. All right, I got mine. All right, Chris, right, go right, for it. I what got you mine. got? I'm dedicated. He had his. He had his. I'm ten dedicated. He had, he had it. I'm de I, I just. I just came up with it. Oh, okay. All right. I'm dedicated. I'm dignified. I failed miserably, but Lord, Lord knows, knows I've tried. tried. <laughs> 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 uh, and so, so, songwriting is so much fun. Mm. I love. I love people who write songs. I love people mm -hmm. who do. And you are a doer, Mallory. That's what I've noticed since you've been back in this town, like a force a bit. Well, uh, that's true. That's I, I, what I appreciate yeah. is that you recorded a live album over at Clementine. I think that's awesome that you would push And you're forth. spawning multiple live albums at Clementine. That's if, true. If people mm -hmm. are doing... Uh, I forgot. Yeah. I forgot until like my birthday this year. I was like, "Oh, two years ago, I was on Clementine's stage releasing an album." You were the first mm. ones that did that, right? That I had recorded. Good Gordon, there. did Gordon do that for you? Um, no, I did that recording with um, Barricade with uh, mm. with Gene. Mm -hmm. Gene um, Bolin. And uh, but that was like a live private recording event at mm -hmm. his studio there, and then but I released it here at Clementine mm. for that open mic, and um, it was really cool to have. I'll never forget how amazing it was to have the entire place sing. Happy birthday to me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but like I'm on the stage. Yeah, basically. Right, right, it was yeah, like, yeah, yeah thank yeah, you. Yeah, well, you, you, you also recorded it. I'm, I'm confused. You did a show at Clementine. Yes. Right? And then who, who recorded that for you? That was the one that was recorded by Gene Bolin. Gene Bolin. Um, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, but I released it solo here. And that gotcha. was before the Hot Mamas had just become a, a brand new baby whisper. At that moment, <laughs> um, baby, just a baby. Yeah, we had had our first gig like May fifteenth of that year, and that was July twentieth. Um, so they like we were already beginning our evil takeover. Um, but... Evil takeover. Oh, <laughs> evil. Oh, it starts with a baby whisper. <laughs> That's takeover. Well, I, was, but... I was talking to Julia, and she won your the contest that you all did. Yeah. She did. She was fabulous. They were all so good. It was one of the most difficult things that any of us have ever had to do. Mm. How did they pick the winner? We had a matrix. And we uh, had what what contest? Do so we, we oh. know what we're talking you, about. You, you tell us. Tell it was kind of part of um, the Hot Mamas Live at Clementine recording thing because we also tied okay. this in with that grant. Um, right. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, it was Jess's idea to host um, a, a songwriting contest. A women's very cool. contest. Yeah. yeah. And so at the very last minute, I kept saying, let's cancel this thing. It's never happening. We have no entries. Yeah. And, really? And the rest of the gals were like, calm down, Mallory. So, you know. <laughs> <sighs> and then at the very last second, all we wanted was 10 entries. And we got exactly 10 entries, like, at the last moment. And Perfect. they were all yeah. so good. It was, like, unbelievable, the yeah. amount of talent in that room. And just, they were so good. And we're so we were grateful we had a... A, a plan. Were you, <laughs> yeah, you, no, that's cool. really were you the judges of the Hot Mamas? We were. We sat at a table like yeah. with <laughs> pens and pencils. Yeah. We felt very judgy. 7.7.5. <laughs> we did. Yeah, we had it all charted From out. From the Austrian and, judge. Okay. It, was, it was difficult, especially when you know that You people, had like a rubric and everything? Yeah. Very mm -hmm. good. And when, especially when you know that they are putting like everything into it. And yeah, every right. one of them was a great performer. Yeah. Like, yeah, so it was it was really challenging. Well, you know what I, I think is interesting about those types of events, or at least I see them, especially with the things that, that we've done, too, is like when you bring people together like that, they start making their own connections and things happen. Yeah. And I think that's very cool. Well, maybe I shouldn't be telling you this, but I'm going to anyway since someone's listening. Okay. Uh, Julia told me <laughs> that she, she won studio time as a result of that contest. Right. Ah. And she talked to Gordon, and, and, and they're going to use it to record a live do a live recording in Clementine later on this year. That's awesome. So, uh, See, there you go. That. Yay. All those connections. Uh, the connections. Yeah. Positive Gordon's things great. happening. 
We loved working with Gordon. He was so fabulous to work with. He's like so a, a famous sense. mountain bike rider, too, isn't he? I don't know. Uh, no, he is. I know this for a fact. Yeah. Okay. He 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 could be. You know. Record- Why did you ask it as a question I then? Know, like- well, I was. I was <laughs> Funny because thing I is, was gonna, like, because I'm, I, I was, was gonna a, go with it. Like, sure, that sounds yeah, right. It was like an NPR interview <laughs> strategy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> as soon as she said no, I said no. He was, he, he could be like recording in, in New York or something. He could be like, but he came down here because because he could record and also be in, and in, be a biker, be a biker, mountain biker. Or, yeah, mountain. wow. Yeah, the, uh, I have that's a it. video recording of you guys of the Hot Mamas. Um, when you guys played at uh, Pale Fire, part of the Tom Petty cover night, the my it's it's my the camera was in the right place, whatever, mm. and it just picked up your all sound so good, and it really got all of you. Uh, don't do me like that, and it's a really I think it's a great recording of that song in your not yeah. a lot of you couldn't hear a lot from that night because it was so packed unless you were in the right places. But that particular person, whoever took that it camera, was Cheyenne. Was, was it Cheyenne? <laughs> it was Cheyenne. Uh, oh my God! Did you even hear? Hi, she's like, there's so and so and so and so. Oh, hello, Cheyenne. Cheyenne from the You're welcome. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't seen her in. <laughs> she lives in Bo- uh, no Massachusetts. Yep. Or, she yeah. was in town. Um, Nakia is now back in. I'm just I'm <laughs> bragging on like some of my favorite people that, yeah. that all like came yeah. at night. Um, Stephanie then Hensley was in town, like a bunch of our old girl gang, and Corey was playing that show. But so she, yes. she was hanging out too. So we had like a bunch of our high school. Cool girls. Yeah. Leah, Leah, I saw all there. you guys. Like, yeah. Aww, that's so cool. But yeah. You guys were probably breaking bo- little boys' hearts all over uh, Harrisonburg and Rockingham <laughs> County for <laughs> years. <sighs> Chances are pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> are any of them we come to doing Rolling Stone? Oh, yeah. You guys yeah. are doing the Rolling Stone thing. Yeah, I'm yeah. excited about okay. that one too. September, September 9th. September 9th. Well, now, were you able to find a song that was not uh, offensive lyrically? Um, Some people are complaining about that. Yeah. <laughs> We found a song that that will work for us, but yeah, okay. five minutes before I I I, sh- I was I slept on it. Like I should have uh, sent a message to you about five minutes before I did because I think speaking of Russell Shank, I think that they got the song that we really wanted. Uh, uh, she's a rainbow. Uh, hey, we're supposed to be keeping it secret. Oh, oh shoot! Uh, yeah, we are. Shh, oh, well. You didn't hear anything. That never happened. Yeah, but, um, that was uh, that, yeah. Was, that was back from the uh, the Rolling Stones when they briefly were in the psychedelic. Uh, realm yeah no, well that show's going to be fun i i it, I'm, I'm, yeah. we're pushing it it's there's like 26 songs in one night it's going to mm-hmm. be a long like trying long, to fit all that in yeah it's right. going to be a big day i don't know how you a, do it uh, i mean it's it, it'll be fine how many figuring. how many words the, we can the last time around. how many was it there uh it was i think it was 24 so there's two mm-hmm. more songs and I, honest to goodness last time felt like fine so I'm thinking yeah. this time we'll feel. Tell us about your homemade instruments in the Hot Mamas. Oh, yeah. Do you ever make any? You always. You I don't cool. make my own instruments. I've seen you playing I, some um, like a cool homemade something or other, like yeah, plastic um, bass or. Mike Chiarello is one of my lifelong oldest friends. Um, our parents almost married twice. Like we've always like inspired each other Whoa. musically. Wait a minute, who, who almost got married? <laughs> Mike Chiarello's mom and yeah. my dad almost married each other twice. <laughs> <laughs> like, twice. Yeah. So, so you could um, be the same person, maybe. It's, you know, <laughs> but. Uh, we've always like both really been into music and like you know again growing up around here there were only yep. so many things to support that and mm-hmm. as original music right. especially so um but yeah um i know that he he's done a lot of luthier work and he was looking for like more ways to get creative with that and i think he had been stockpiling random bits of trash <laughs> Yes, and um perfect. i was looking for uh some sort of alternative to an upright bass because I really can't afford one. Mm. Um, and I was hoping that the resonator of the jug would be enough to carry, but uh, it does need a pickup in it. So I do yeah. have one now. But um, yeah, Mike Chirello made that. And he has since made a lot of really cool stuff. So if you guys know um, mm. uh, like him on Facebook or whatever, definitely check out his really cool. I can, uh, he, is, he, is a, he is a really good guitar player. He's, he's doing like this Michael yeah. Hedges kind of stuff mm-hmm. now. That uh, yeah. my, my memory of him was more, he was more, I guess, more of a metal or... A heavier sound. Well, he can do that stuff, but he's always like done really cool acoustic. Cocky King is, I know, one of his big influences. Mm. And I hadn't, and been, definitely hadn't been to open mic for a long time, and I w- went there, and he was. I just missed him. You know, he'd, he'd come down and play because he doesn't. He's in Waynesboro, right? Yeah, the dooms. 
Doom, what's that? Dooms. Dooms. Dooms, Virginia. Oh, it's right outside. Right outside. Is that where the apocalypse is going to start? If anyone, I mean, if anyone's from the cool place, like, that's it. But, I mean, well, it sounds really cool. (laughs) Oh, man. So how was playing the Foundry? That was wild, especially because it was a brunch gig. Oh, <laughs> yeah. right, right. So it was like, hi, it's daytime and we're playing brunch, but you're all very far away. But it was really neat, and yeah. they were super great and kind to us there. The sound was awesome. Oh, that's it cool. Put our logo up on stage. Yeah, so cool. right. You know? That's good. How many yeah. people were, did people show up? Yeah, yeah, we had a decent crowd for, I mean, because it's a new series that they're doing. They're, yeah. they're doing this like brunch Sunday. Mom Shackles came, thing. right? Um, I think she was going to, and I think something happened. Yeah, so I don't remember seeing her there. But yeah, we had we had a decent turnout, um, especially because it is a newer thing mm-hmm. they're trying to bring yeah. in on Sundays. So I'm hoping we get somebody from from there too to come here. Talk yeah, to us a bit, I hope. Yeah. Yeah, they've got so much. They're like doing yeah. so much. And so that whole weekend, that was my birthday weekend. I ended up spending basically, I almost lived at the foundry that weekend. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, on Friday, I went to AB's birthday party yeah. with um, Mike Dillon yeah. playing. And Mike Dillon, if you don't know, is just this unbelievable like mallet player. Like wow. he's a percussionist, but he plays, you know, like xylophone and yeah. um, all this. And he's just phenomenal and it's as weird as it sounds and really great that's um, cool so definitely when when he comes back around you should go to that All right. um, but i saw that and then i took my daughter to a taylor swift cover band thing on oh, saturday fun. and that was adorable and seeing like your kid fall in love with music in those moments yeah. like uh, yeah. don't make me weep but yeah, yeah. it was no. really are you the only hot mama who's an actual mama nope we actually have three now oh, so. you three. <laughs> yeah we're, our numbers are growing mamas mamas <laughs> Mamas. 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 Hey, you know what? We have reached our time. Oh, wow. uh, no, it goes by so it goes it goes by so fast. So quick. But thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. I'm glad you fun. could be a part of it. We didn't even get to do the unexpected notion with the <laughs> well, he's not here. How can we he's, unexpected he's notion? not here. Uh, well, I really look forward to seeing what you will be doing over the next couple months. Thanks. And yeah. look for the hot mamas. Uh, uh, what, what's the next gig? What's the absolute next um, Well, we have these two couple uh, festivals coming up, and then we're sort of like pulling back from our summer yeah. major push. Mm-hmm. But we, we really, 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 really want to make a record um, this yeah. winter. And cool. right now we have a lot of different ideas about how we might approach that, and they're all super top secret. So Ooh, nice. good. we're figuring be, it out. You know what, though? Good deal. When you make that record, come back. Come back and share. We'll, we'll talk about it. Cool. We'll talk about yeah. the record. We, we can even like play a couple of the songs. That'd be fun. Yeah. That'd be that would fun. be super cool. Love thank that. You. And absolutely, thank you so much for being here. Jay, you want to say goodbye? Uh, so uh, I've, I've been letting Dan wrap it up, and he says <laughs> a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah, it's really good. you been listening to Bingo is Like the Podcast. At, uh, brought to you by Ruby's Arcade in uh, Historic and Tropical Downtown Harrisburg. And sure. Come see uh, these young men do the <laughs> extravaganza mm. of his life. 7.30 every, almost every Tuesday Yeah, for the last seven years. And listen to us anytime <laughs> you want to on the internet. See you next time, kids. So long. Bye. Bye now. Bingo is Life, a post-bingo Harrisburg podcast, is brought to you by the Brothers How to Show and our friends at Ruby's Arcade in downtown Harrisburg, Virginia. If you've enjoyed the show and feel it's worth spreading a little joy in this world, please tell just one person that you like this podcast. Word of mouth, more than any other form of promotion, is how creative works get noticed and sustain themselves. Thank you, Andrew Hickey, for that bit of wisdom, and thank you, listeners, for being part of the fun. <laughs>